Good morning. This morning's video is partly inspired by my friend Heather Demetrius, who hosted one of her monthly writers gatherings last weekend, uh, which are free, by the way, you can sign up. I will um, mention her in this post so you can um, go through and uh, add yourself to her list for notifications of future workshops, which are so nourishing and um, oh, I always learn a, a lot from these workshops. So uh, in the workshop last weekend about presence and, and being present on the page, Heather talked about the objective correlative, which, uh, and by that um, we mean the external, an external representation or a symbol of a character's inner state. That's like a really uh, basic, basic definition. And so immediately I think of plants. And I, so I have to admit that I used to be, I used, I used to think of myself as someone who had a black thumb. So a few, a couple years ago, um, I did a, and I'm, I'm sure, I know some of you have watched this, the Life Without Envy web workshop, and in one of those videos, I did not notice that my dead maiden hair fern was tucked away in the corner, but it was like perfectly visible. It was very embarrassing. And so I, I kept telling myself that I wanted to be someone who fostered new green life. And I didn't want to be someone who, you know, killed every plant that I ever bought or was given. So last summer, when I decided that I was going to move from Providence down to Washington, D.C., where I'm currently located, I was given this fabulous Tradescantia plant from my friend Jason, who is also on Instagram, and he has a plant, uh, an account all about plants, so I will also link to him. But when he gave me this plant, it was like this big. Um, it was a little bit, only a little bit bigger than this. So you can see, this is a baby that I, this is actually the second baby that I have cut out of this Tridescantia plant, and it is flourishing. So I, I just, I'm completely in love with this plant. When the bright sunlight comes through, you can see the leaves are just sparkling magenta. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So I feel like this plant is a, and, and some other plants to a, a, a lesser extent, um, but this is the one that I feel like is flourishing the most. I feel like this is an external representation of my emotional state. I feel like it's symbolized my um, my recent flourishing and not in the sense of like like good external you know markers of success being on their way, but in the sense of feeling more so than ever before that I am exactly where I am meant to be doing exactly what I'm meant to do. And so that is my, that's my suggestion for anyone out there who is feeling stuck, life feels stale. Um, you know, it's easy now that it's springtime, you can see the buds on the trees and everything is growing again, things are moving again. Um, so you, you don't even ha actually have to buy a plant you don't have to watch something growing from seed, from a seed that you purchase in a packet at a store to see the new life and to meditate on that and to remember that even it's an easy way to remember and to remind yourself that even when it seems like things aren't happening when you feel stuck new life is always coming through Things are happening even when those things are invisible, when that growth is not yet visible. So, oh, and I, I have to, this is my begonia. This is my alocasia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and then these are the delightful little succulents that my friend Rachel has gotten for me. She got me a subscription box. So I have this, this is not a, a succulent, that's a spider plant. Um, I didn't have any of this. Everything died. 
Everything used to die, and you know why? Because I didn't pay attention. <laughs> so I would remember that I had a plant, and I would be like, ooh, I need to water you, I need to take care of you, and then I would drown the plant. So loving attention is the key to developing your green thumb, and I'm sure that Jason would agree with me. And uncoincidentally, Jason also, I keep holding up these book covers and you, you know, they're always mirrored. I don't know how to fix this. So this book is still relevant, even though it was published many moons ago. Um, I think it was published in the late eighties or early nineties. And so there's still mention of fax machines in here, making a living without a job by Barbara J. Winter, who is a wonderful author and has had many businesses over the years. And so Jason gave me this book around the same time, like we knew that I was leaving. He got me this plant as a going away gift. He got me as in he, you know, started a new plant from his Triscantia plant. And then he also gave me this book. So I just wanna leave you with a relevant passage from Barbara J. Winters, Making a Living Without a Job. For a long time, I've suspected that there's some, mystic, some, some sort of mystical link between growing a garden and growing a business. Like many self-bossers, I am also a passionate gardener. In the summer, my bleak apartment balcony is transformed into a container garden that is the envy of my neighbors. Cosmos, snapdragons, daisies, salvia, clematis, herbs, miniature roses, and magnificent hibiscus overflow their pots bringing hours of joy to me and other admirers. After four years of gardening in less than perfect conditions, I've grown wiser about what to plant and how to nurture the things I grow. Gardening teaches patience and reminds me that, th that seeds I've planted in other ways need time to sprout and flourish. Gardening is a fine teacher and I apply many lessons to my business that I have learned in my garden making a living without a job. I love that passage. So I hope that this was inspiring. If you have a question that you'd like me to answer on a future Friday morning office hours episode, please send me a DM or just comment below this video. There is also a an anonymous form that you can submit. The link is on my website at cometparty.com. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a beautiful day.